Hello and welcome to the lesson on the lumbar and sacral plexus. My name is John Gibbons and I will take you through this presentation. So let's start with the image of the lumbar plexus here. And let me go to this corner and grab my colored pen. Basically, the uh, lumbar plexus will come from the primary rami of T12 and it forms the subcostal nerve here. But it's mainly the L1, L2, L3 and also the L4. So it's mainly the lumbar spine, hence the word lumbar, yeah, the nerve plexus here. Um, the three nerves on the left hand side here, so the iliohypogastric nerve and the ilioinguinal, there's an N missing from there, so I apologize for the spelling mistake. Uh, they basically come from one single nerve root from L1. Uh, we will discuss the sensory components shortly. The genitofemoral nerve will come from L1 and also L2 along here. The lateral femoral cutaneous will come from L2 and also L3. Yeah, so it comes up from there, and that's mainly a sensory nerve, hence the word cutaneous on the outside part of the thigh. The obturator nerve and the femoral nerve all come from the same level. So the obturator nerve will come from L2, so it comes down, comes down with L3, and also a branch of L4 here. Okay, so all of these come down to become the obturator nerve. And the femoral nerve or femoral nerve will come from L2 around here, so it comes down along there. And also there's a branch from L3, which comes down, and also from L4. So it's a thicker nerve, and it comes down mainly for the quadriceps, but we'll discuss that shortly. So let's move on to the next page. Now, on this one, you can see it is mainly sensory. Okay, so the sensory nerves, and you can see the area of color around the anterior groin area in here. So again, we've got, well, the psoas muscle, you can see the psoas muscle. You can actually see this nerve, the genitofemoral nerve, penetrating through the psoas major here. You can see that, okay? So the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal, you can see it now, uh, basically come from L1, okay? So it comes from that sort of area only, and then it comes down. Now, let's do the iliohypogastric. This purple area, so, Look at the table at the bottom. So this area here, which is basically this area around, okay, okay, so all that area of purple. So the anterior sort of like pubic sort of area here, and also the lateral sort of gluteal area. And the sensory is basically controlled from the iliohypogastric. Uh, from a motor perspective, that nerve and the ilioinguinal supplies the conjoint tendon of the internal oblique and also the transverse abdominis around here. So the ilioinguinal nerve comes down, you can see it comes down, and if you look here, you can see the green area. So basically this green area is the sensation for that part of the body. So it's basically the um, uh, roof of the penis for the male around the sort of like pubic sort of area and the labia in the female around that sort of area. So that'll be the ilioinguinal. Now, the genitofemoral nerve has a genital branch and a femoral or femoral branch here. And you can see, so the genital branch comes over, okay? So again, so like this area of the male scrotal area and part of the penis and also the labia in the woman. And also the femoral branch is more the medial anterior superior part of the thigh, okay? Around that sort of area. Uh, they also supply the, um, the cremaster muscle for the male for the testy. Um, and then if you were to stroke this area on the male, then the testy will lift and it's innervated via the inguinal um, nerve and then it goes in around L1 and then it comes out via the uh, genital branch for the uh, L2 area. Okay, so then it causes the, and it's called the um, cremasteric reflex. Okay, but it's only on the male because of the testicle. Okay, uh, I think that's okay in that one. So let's go to the next page. Now, this is the lateral femoral cutaneous. Have a look at where it comes from. So it comes from the L2, okay, and also the L3 comes down. Comes under the inguinal ligament here. Okay, so it comes down there, and so it comes down that area, and then supplies that outer part of the thigh. And you can see this area in here, where it supplies the outer part. And basically, if it gets caught around this area of the inguinal ligament, just underneath it, then it could cause an irritation and then you get lack of sensation around you. So this basically area, if I do a Z across, 
then that is where the numbness tends to be. Ladies who are pregnant can get this, also teenagers wearing very tight, they call it like a skinny jean syndrome because of the tightness of the jeans. Uh, there is a medical condition called Meralgia Parasitica, um, so if you have compression of a lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and you get the sensation around here, then that's the condition they will call it. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, the obturator nerve. So let's have a look here. So the obturator, so basically coming from L2, okay, so L2 comes across, okay, L3 and L4, okay, it comes down, down here, and then on its way, will supply the obturator exonus along here, uh, the pectineus, the adductor muscles, the brevis, the longus, and the gracilis, and also ductor magnus. And half the ductor magnus is by the sciatic nerve as well. So that's a bit of a, the obturator nerve from there. Moving on. The femoral nerve or femoral nerve, depends how you say it. From the same area, larger, thicker nerve comes down. Okay, so from L2, okay, branch here, two, comes down, okay, and three, okay, and then four, femoral nerve actually splits into an anterior and posterior division. And then we've got the muscles that supplies the iliacus on here. So iliacus, sartorius, pectineus, and then obviously the vasti group, lateralis, medialis, intermedius, which is not there, and the rectus femoris. The femoral nerve, which you cannot see, it continues as a sensory nerve to be known as the saphenous nerve, and it supplies the medial lower part of the lower leg. Okay, but it's not in the picture for this one. The femoral nerve picture, you can see it coming down, so that's quite a nice one. Yeah, where you can see it on the actual, uh, on a human, if you like. Um, so it comes down along the anterior part of the thigh. Let's move on to the next one. So the sacral plexus. So the sacral plexus, the sacral plexus actually comes from L4, okay, and L5, and S1, and S2, and S3, and S4, the primary rami. So that's where it comes from. You can see it here. And then we've got the coxedial plexus. I'm missing the S, but uh, I'm sure you know what I mean. Yeah, from that sort of area. We've already mentioned the obturator nerve, the femoral nerve, the lumbar sacral. So think of the words lumbar sacral, okay, so the lumbar and the sacral trunk along here, which obviously you can see the sciatic nerve. Now, the superior gluteal nerve and the inferior gluteal obviously supplies the gluteal muscles. The superior gluteal is mainly, comes from, you can, well, you can sort of see it, okay, it's basically an L4 branch, an L5 and an S1, and then these three nerves will become the superior gluteal, and they supply the gluteus medius, the minimus, and the tensor facial arter. The inferior gluteal is only for the gluteus maximus, and it's got a branch of L5 and S1, and a bit of S2 coming in here, okay? So there's three nerves here, come down to be known as the inferior, supplying the gluteus maximus. The sciatic nerve is split into the common fibula of a common peroneal and also the tibial. The common peroneal, you can see it here, of the fibula part, okay, it comes up. So basically it comes from L4, so, okay, so it's L4 will be part of that, and L5, and also S1, and also S2 will be part of the common fibula, whereas the tibial part will be L4, you can follow it up here, okay, so it comes up, so so it'll be L4, so, I was trying to work this out, okay, so it's basically an L4 division comes off, an L5, and also an S1 will come in, and an S2, and also an S3 to form the tibial component of it. The posterior femoral cutaneous is essentially the posterior part of the thigh, like the lateral femoral, but this is the back, comes from S1 to S3, um, and then you've got some cutaneous nerves here, and the coxial around here. Okay, I think that will do on there. There is one missing, the pudendal nerve, which comes from S2 to 4, but we'll talk about that shortly. Now, the sciatic nerve. Um, again, I think I used my pen for this. You can see the piriformis. You can see the sciatic nerve. Potentially, this nerve will come below the piriformis. Um, in some cases, it might come through. In 1 in 5, 20% um, of the population, give or take. Okay, you can see the gallimai superior here, so it's normally filled, well, it comes through that space in there. Uh, it comes out of the sciatic foramen, we all know where it comes from, so the L4 yeah, and 5, and it comes out and through, and then this is obviously split down. These are the six deep lateral rotators in here, okay, the gallimai here, and then the quadratus femoris, and so on. Uh, I think the obturators are missing there, but that's okay. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the sciatic nerve, yeah, from L4 to S3. 
comes out. I've already talked about the two different divisions. So the sciatic nerve will supply half the adductor magnus, because uh, the obturator will do the other. semi ten, semi mem, bicep femoris, okay? So they will come down and supply that sort of area. Um, and it comes down, so basically as it comes down to the posterior part of the knee, you can see it splits here, and then we've got the tibial nerve continuing all the way down into the lower part of the limb, we'll see. And then we've got the fibular nerve of a common fibular nerve of a common peroneal nerve that comes down and will also split. Let's move on. You can see the sciatic nerve, again, coming out of the model. Yeah, the greater sciatic foramen here in that area comes down. Oop, let's just go back one. And then you can see it comes down. Tibial nerve comes down, and then this uh, peroneal nerve or the fibula comes around there. Moving on. Now, the tibial nerve. Okay, so the tibial nerve comes down. So, basically, all the muscles in the posterior lower limb tibialis posterior, popliteus, gastrocnemius, the flexor digitorum longus, flexor lucius longus, soleus is all innervated by the tibial nerve. It comes down, so it will supply all of them. And you can see uh, the common fibular nerve along here. Okay, so it comes down as the common fibular nerve. We'll discuss that one shortly. Uh, continues through the tarsal tunnel. Okay, so the nerve comes down around here. Uh, that is a mnemonic for that area. They call it Tom, Dick, and Very Nervous Harry. But basically, if I said Tom, Dick, Harry, um, so the Tom is the tibialis posterior. So the Tom, the D is the digitorum, flexor digitorum, and Harry is the flexor lucius longus, where they come down anatomically. And if I added in um, Tom, Dick, and very nervous, so the A is the artery, the N is the, the nerve, and the, uh, the V will be the returning vein. So hopefully I can find my pen. Where are we? Along there. I think we are back. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the plantar nerve here. Um, so the tibial nerve becomes the plantar nerve. So when it comes around the tarsal tunnel, as I said earlier, it then becomes the medial plantar nerve and then also splits into the lateral plantar nerve. And you can see all the muscles that it innervates under the plantar surface of the foot. And I don't need to go through all of them for this lecture. Okay, so the peroneal nerve, also known as the common fibular nerve, okay, so you have a choice, medically it's actually called the common fibular nerve, um, so it comes down and then it will split into the superficial fiber which comes down here and then that will supply the fibularis longus or the peroneal longus and the fibularis brevis or the peroneal brevis along here and the nerve then at this level will split into the deep fibula or the deep peroneal nerve and supply the tibialis anterior and the extensor digitorum longus and the extensor lucius longus. Okay, so it comes down and then goes into that sort of area. Um, the fibularis tertius, that is actually, we can't call it fibularis tertius, but it's actually a continuation of the extensor digitorum longus, okay, along here, um, around that sort of area. Okay, so the pro peroneal nerve, um, or the common fibular nerve, splits into the superficial and the deep, and it supplies those muscles as we have mentioned. Okay. We're almost there. So the pudendal nerve, which basically comes from S2 to S4 along here. So if I show you the pudendal nerve, which I've highlighted, it's there. So S2, S3, okay, and S4, it comes down along here. So it supplies the perineum um, for um, sensation around that sort of area, but also from a motor perspective, it will also um, control the contraction of the external anal sphincter and also the external urethral sphincter as well. Okay, so as you can probably guess, it's very, very important. Okay, so basically I've covered the majority of the um, lumbar sacral plexus. I hope you enjoyed the talk and if you have any questions, then I'm sure you can add them where you feel it's appropriate. Thank you for your time.